Welcome back to Engine TV Play Super Smash Bros. Project M. Featuring myself, Spencer, my co-host Matt. I'm going to play as probably Samus again. Alright, yeah. So, I was just talking to Matt about this game called Istrolid. I-S-T-R-O-L-I-D. Um, and uh, Matt doesn't know much about this game because I was just kind of like like sh showing it to him. But it's, it's on Steam. And uh, I was playing this game last night. And uh, it basically, it's a game where... You you design your own spaceships and fleet, and then uh, you compete against other players or the or the computer um, with your with your with your design fleet basically. In the campaign, you only have certain items that you can choose from, and you have to unlock as you go. Um, usually, each each level unlocks more stuff. Uh, but in the multiplayer, the multiplayer you literally are given everything to choose from. Um, there are limits like your your uh, your ship can't cost more than a thousand dollars or something like that. So um, they th make sure that you're not gonna like you know go too crazy with it. And it has a neat mechanic because like you design your ship, everything has a cost and a weight, and um, you know it all affects the different aspects of like the way the ship runs, uh, which then you have to balance out with with other pieces like wings to make it turn faster and all sorts of stuff. Um, but then. Uh, I haven't heard this song in a while. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the neat mechanic with it is the cost is actually a major, like, like uh, mechanic where um, as you fight, you, you spawn all your guys on, like, one side of the map and the other guy spawns on the other side of the map. And you, uh, you're constantly making, like, $10, like $10 a second or something. And so you have to... Wait till you have enough to afford the ship before you can spawn it in from your fleet, and then and then that's how you fight. And you, and you basically just fight the other people's ships and take control points, and then like that's the battle. But I played like an hour and a half of it last night, and instead of replying to your yeah, instead of replying to YouTube comments, well, what happened was like I, I was kind of tired, like I'm gonna go to bed, like uh, and then Matt texted me like like ha like just after you know or whatever. He's like, hey man, don't forget to reply to comments. Because, not that I don't want to, it's just that I never think about it. So, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And then I found this game, and then I just played, and played, and played, and just didn't stop. Um, but, uh, um, okay, I want to find a way of, 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 of actually involving you in the conversation, Matt. So, like, ask me a question about the game or something, because, like, sometimes I just ramble on and just, like, spew information, so. Well, how many, how, like, how, how much did you win? How much did I win? Well, I played the first, like, eight uh, campaign missions um, after spending about 45 minutes designing a ship um, in just the designer, which is mm -hmm. totally separate, uh, without realizing that I actually wasn't fighting somebody. Because the game has, like, a weird thing where um, you can design ships, at, like, I think even as the game's going to, like, I guess adapt to what the guy's doing or whatever. It's kind of interesting. But uh, and you can load in different fleets. You can have like a, like a bunch of fleets just to like switch out, depending on the situation, I guess. Um, but no, I I only played one like actual multiplayer game and just destroyed the guy. So I don't know. What what kind of ship? Well, uh, the guy was using. I only saw he was only using like one type of ship, and his ship had a bunch of heavy armor on the sides, and it was smaller. And the game, you design your ships, like, in a grid, so it's, like, it's top-down. And, um, he had just uh, a bunch of heavy armor, and then his ships were kind of slow, because of all the heavy armor made it really, like, heavy. And, uh, he had just maybe one or two guns on each ship. So he had probably, like, a, you know, a relatively cheap, but definitely not the cheapest form of ship, and he just had one of them. So I think what he was trying to go for is just, like, a good solid ship that he could just have a bunch of. What I did was I created a really, really cheap ship that was literally just a battery because there's a uh, there's an energy system in the game where you can have uh, reactors to create power or batteries just to give them like a lifetime, and which is good for um, smaller ships um, or ships that have really, really expensive to use weapons, um, so that they can use these really expensive weapons without having to like go into the reactor shit because everything's powered by the by the power you have to 
You, you move. Everything is powered by the power. Like, it even tells you, like, how much power you're using a second just to move Welcome your ship. Welcome to the U.S. government. Like <laughs> um, so, I, I created these small ships with just a, a, a tiny battery, like, balanced uh, armor, so it was, like, light, but then... Um, the thing with the balanced armor is, is, is it's kind of weird, like, it, it's just slightly... It just takes up a little bit more space, but they're pretty... They're, they're definitely cheaper than the... Uh, the lightweight armor, um, but have just a little bit less, like, armor in general, but whatever. I was going for, like, super fast. So I made him really fast. I gave him one gun, just a laser, just a laser cannon, a short-range beam weapon, basically. Super, super cheap, right? I think these, these things cost me, like, $90 to make, which is, like, really fucking cheap. If, if, if the limit is a $1,000, I made, I made, it like, a $90 ship. So, had okay armor. Uh, it might have been more than 90, like, 120. It doesn't matter. And then I made one really, really big ship that cost $983. Like, I, I went to, like, the limit as much as I could go. And it had, like, a ton of heavy armor. Moved super, super slowly. Uh, could turn relatively well, though. I gave it a lot of wings. So I just, like, gave it, like, just a ton of fucking wings to fill out the $1,000. Because uh, I wanted it just to be super expensive because I only wanted to have one. Um, and then I gave it, like, I think six reactors. Um, three batteries and then three uh of these things called energy transfers and energy transfers you you actually give off energy to the surrounding uh ships and because energy is such a big factor of the game and i made these th these ships that have a really small battery and no reactor for their own so they have a limited battery supply until they just stop working like their 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 ship will start will just like they won't be able to move or anything they just be a dead ship so what i did was i just spawned a ton of these tiny little ships Right after spawning this huge reactor ship, basically. And then just had the, the smaller ships follow the reactor ship around. Uh, never running out of power. And just having a fucking shit ton of them. And then swarm the guy. Nice. Yeah, super cool. So, like, there's all sorts of different, like, wait, like, 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 uh, opportunities for, for stuff like that. You can have cloaking devices for the ships. You can, um, even, um, put augments in where it'll, they're... You can put them next to like a, a big grouping of like weapons and you can give your weapons like higher accuracy or than usual or more damage but then you lose accuracy. Just a bunch of different factors. The main thing about the game that um, is a, a little bit limiting is you can't really like target um, enemies to kill. Like you can give you can give your ships AI to like tell them to do things in certain circumstances, which is kind of cool. It kind of reminds me of the gambits in Final Fantasy IV. No, Final Fantasy IV. Final Fantasy XII, where... Do you remember that, Matt? The gambit yep. system? Yeah, where you could like load up certain actions depending on what they do or whatever. It's not as in-depth, but... You can make up for that where, like, say, if a, if a shot doing 20 damage or more is coming at you, dodge. But besides that, you just kind of click, like, where to go, and then they automatically attack. But, I mean, that's not that big of a deal, because if you create a good, a, a good solid fleet, then you can just watch them mow down people. So yeah, it's super fun. It's called Istralid. And uh, there's, there's actually a really good, like, multiplayer kind of feel to the game. Like, they have... Uh, you can just join a lobby, and there'll just be, like, 1v1s or 2v2s. And then you can just watch... Like, like they, have, they can have as many spectators as you want, just, like, join in just to watch. And then you, you kind of go, like, around in circles, and just whoever wants to play plays. You just chat. Kind of cool. Um, but still, really, eh, uh, oh, I almost forgot to say that the, the game's free to play. It's just free. No, uh, no, like, like I don't know how they make money. I, I, I don't know that they do. Like, I don't. They don't have any like way to buy stuff or anything. I, I haven't found any ads. It's just a free to play game. Be crazy. So well, they might have released it to get their name out there. That's true. It's a good game. Like I would, I, I, I would have definitely like either at least paid money for it or suffered ads for it to uh, be a game. Cause like it's like I'd pay like five dollars for the game. That was pretty crazy. That was pretty crazy. But um, yep, super fun though. I wanted to make like a huge like. <laughs> it's funny because I they have a little thing at the top that tells you if you're missing something or if like your ship's too slow or something like that, and uh, they give you like little indicators. And uh, I didn't pay attention to it at first. Um, and so I was building this huge ship. 
and uh, I looked up, and I, I had been paying attention to it to at least a little bit at first, but then I was just so in, like, in, like engrossed in like building the ship, I didn't realize that there was actually like a cost, like, um, uh, limit, and I, I was creating my reactor ship for my idea, and I originally had like, I think nine batteries, no, no, nine uh, um, energy uh, reactors, and then like three uh, of like basically everything was like times three the whole ship was times three it was huge and then uh, I looked at the top and it's like oh ship too expensive can't be over a thousand dollars and I looked over to the side it was like thirty six hundred dollars or something like that <laughs> like just something ridiculous um, but what else is cool about the game their weapon selection is super cool they have they have you know laser guns it, uh, they have uh, so you know the, the standard light laser gun which is short range uh, and then like heavy laser gun which is like a medium range weapon and then they have um, like heavy guns like like high caliber um, turrets they have uh, torpedoes and missiles which which both work like have their own unique like like way of, of working like actual torpedoes and missiles which is cool and then they have something that I thought was really awesome. In fact, it's the only weapon that I put on my reactor ship now that I remember. Um, is this... It's it's called um, a Tesla... Tesla Whip or something? But basically, it's a... Uh, it, it's an attack that attacks in, like, a, a radius. So I put it on my 360 uh, 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 weapon slot. 360 degree weapon slot. And put it in the front of the ship. So it only has one weapon, but it just like hits everything with like 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 lightning arcs and shit around it. So it totally matched with my you know big reactor ship feel that I had. Um, but the original version of it, the thirty six hundred dollar version of the ship had like two of those in the front, and then like three of these these like plasma wave weapons that also attack in a radius around it. Um, but I had to get rid of those because obviously it cost too much money. Game. That was actually not a bad game. The winner is... Yeah, but there's a lot of other weapons too. Point defense, black cannons, um, I'm also missing those like super super cool. But yeah, so yeah, yeah, fun game. I wouldn't mind like doing a video or two on it, cause you know, it's like it's super easy to set up. Just playing, and you can fully customize your uh, your ships. Like literally, they don't even give you chassis to choose from. It's just a grid, and then you have like shapes to put on the grid, and then it just works. This is super cool. Oh, which for me is the main selling point of the game. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a big sucker for uh, spaceship games. Oh, which reminds me. I signed up for the beta for Dreadnoughts. Have you signed up for the beta for that, dude? Probably not. Did you get in? Um, I don't know yet. I haven't seen anything. Um, I just signed it like, ju ju just recently. I tried to sign up for the beta like a couple of days ago on my phone. But I don't know what like shit they're running, like HTML5, or I don't know what they were running to, to do the, the, the sign-in sheet that they had on the website. Well, but, if it's HTML5, then it should work. Yeah, well, I don't know. It wasn't working, basically. And uh, only when I went to go put in my birthday, for which is like one of the last bits of information you have to put in, uh, only the month part, like the only the month drop-down menu worked. The rest of like the day and the year, just you click on it and nothing would happen. And I tried it over and over again all day, like a couple of days ago, trying to get it to work, and it never did. So I had to wait till I got home, then I forgot. So then I just did it, uh, I think yesterday but um that game looks fucking awesome it's kind of like world of tanks or or you know esque where basically it's a group of people uh against another group of people in a ship in space and it's just like deathmatch it's like a team deathmatch type of scenario but you have so many huge ships to choose from 
You can Isn't like, it Warhammer? No, no, you're thinking of um Gothic Fleet or something. Yeah, shit? yeah, Gothic. Yeah. Battlefleet Gothic. Which also looks legit, by the way. So I also want to play that as well. But um But it, it's it's an online game and um just just the just the thought of playing as like a huge fucking like capital ship cruiser from like Star Trek or Star Wars, you know. Just sounds awesome. I don't even think I've ever heard of it. Yeah, they have a lot of really cool features too, like um like they go like really sci fi with it. Like they don't try to do like uh like anything remotely realistic. <laughs> um for instance, uh some ships will have like a warp that where you can like warp across the the battlefield to uh, get to different parts. Uh, the Dreadnoughts are the, the biggest ship in the game, which is why, which is where it gets its name. And they're these, like, like truly, like, giant spaceships that are kind of slow, but they're like these huge tanks that have turrets just lining the sides. Super cool. I've been, like, waiting for a game like that for a long time. And it's cool because you can, like, be on a team and you, you can choose to play the Dreadnought or you could play a cruiser or a... Or a, uh, um, a Corvette or something, and there's a bunch of different like they have kind of like classes in a way, like roles, but nothing so much as you know healer or anything like that. But I don't know enough about the game to really talk too fully about it. But I just reminded myself that that game existed, and I want to—I really want to try it out. Hopefully, get into the beta. That'd be sick. It's kind of a closed beta, so. To sign up and hope. Lucky. That's the second time you've done that. I know. To explain what ha what's happening there, I'm neglecting to do an attack or any other move to get myself out of the tumble before trying to do the uh, the air dodge to do the uh, tether. So I just hit the button and then watch myself still tumble down and then realize that it's too late now and then come on. On the inside, of course. These big girls don't cry. What fucking song is that? Big girls don't cry. Uh, I think it's called Big Girls Don't Cry. I don't think that's what it's called. It sounds like some Kelly Clarkson shit. Oh yeah, it's like it's like a, like a one of those sad ballady hip hop songs. Not hip hop. Well, whatever R and B or whatever. What pop. you mean pop? <laughs> None of that is correct for what Kelly Clarkson does. Well, no, I, I, I wasn't saying that it was Kelly Clarkson. I'm saying that like the actual song is like one of those like slower, you know, what? Slower songs. Some, some like girl who probably on the same album is talking about partying and shit um, is all of a sudden trying to get real. Somebody's gonna really like that song and be, and be like totally pissed off at me. Like whatever style that like I I, I guess just pop. pop. Yeah. But pop, it's it's so weird that pop music is like actually like a genre with like stuff because like pop is just means popular. So like anything that's popular can be considered pop. But like that's then not, also there's that's not true. Well, it's I mean it is partially true. Like you 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 can call uh like pop it, it it's just different. Like like it it doesn't have all the same. Uh, like requirements that other genres have when it comes to like sound and stuff like that, especially the different rock, rock genres. There's like very particular calling cards, you know. But with pop music, it, it, it's, it's a little bit more, it's more ideal or idyllic, or it's 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 less specific when it comes to that type of stuff. So it's it's hard to say like like can you just be pop or do you, or, or or can you be something else and also pop? You know, like I think pop has is no longer means popular That's, yeah I mean that might be true I, I think maybe the, the late 90s and early 2000s probably is what changed that then you know with uh, all the all the boy bands and shit you know I'm saying well no because they had top 40 and pop top of the chart pop whatever in the 80s yeah but the stuff they had on there was all sorts of genres of music it was just uh, there was definitely a style and that's not, you know, it was pop. I mean, it's not like you had the Ramones or, or. Uh, well, they or, had uh, the Smiths on there. 
Well, yeah, but that's indie, and they didn't want to be on there that much. <laughs> like, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I know. Um, I just it was it was just kind of interesting to me that well, like now that I think about it, how pop like you can definitely tell when something is pop, but at the same time, like what makes it pop? You know, like what what specific about it? You know, is pop? Is it electronic like instruments? Is it like the way the singer is mixed or sounds or the style you know like that they go for you know i guess like, well what about it is pop you know what i'm saying but then you just know instinctively you know that it is maybe it's just because i i just haven't put enough thought into what separates pop but Ah, fuck. You know, I had like a like a mental image of myself trying to do a wave dash off of that and then doing exactly what happened, being like, this is what's going to happen if you do this. And I'm like, not if I do it really well, then I messed it up. And then it happened. Maybe I should just listen to myself. Dude. I could have just waited a little longer. Damn it, I tried a forward air on there, but like I I guess I held downward a little bit, so I just Oh no. to get cheeky with me walk up and try to throw me oh my god it was like slow motion get down here I thought for sure that was going to hit you.
I just realized something. If you, if you get hit by something and you're able to jump out of it, then you can also wave land out of it. You know? Probably. Oh, I just I, I just did like a half one, not realizing what I was doing. Ooh. So that's something to like really speed things up. It's like that's interesting. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button. If you want to see some more, subscribe. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.